Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. Also, please subscribe to the channel for more labs like this. In this lab, the final lab of my ICND1 series, we will troubleshoot some misconfigurations in this topology. This is the same topology from the previous configuration lab, but I've purposefully made some misconfigurations. I highly recommend you go through this lab yourself to find and fix the errors on your own, and just use this video to check your solution. Let's get started. The first problem is that R2 and R3 aren't receiving a RIP route to 192.168.1.0/24 from R1. First, let's confirm the problem. On R2, enable show IP RIP database. We have a route to R3's inside network 30.0.0.0/24, but not to 192.168.1.0/24. Let's check on R3 too. Enable show IP RIP database. There's R2's 192.168.2.0/24 network, but not 192.168.1.0/24. Okay, so R2 and R3 are exchanging routes with each other. So there are probably no issues with R2 and R3. Let's take a look at R1. Enable show IP RIP database. This is interesting. R1 is receiving routes from R2 and R3, but not advertising a route to 192.168.1.0 slash 24 to them. There is one very likely cause. Show IP protocols. This command is useful for getting information about routing protocols such as RIP running on the router. And here is our issue. Passive interfaces, Gigabit Ethernet 01. A passive interface will listen for route advertisements, but will not advertise any routes. Let's fix that. Conf T, router rip. No passive interface, G01. To make a passive interface, you just use the passive interface command under router rip configuration mode. And of course, to remove it, just use no in front of the command. Exit. So, as long as there are no other problems here, R2 and R3 should have a route to 192.168.1.0/24 now. I'll check on R2. Show IP RIP database. There it is. And on R3, show IP RIP database. Okay, problem one is solved. The next issue is that hosts in the 192.168.2.0/24 network aren't receiving IP addresses via DHCP. Let's confirm. I'll go on PC4. IP config. It has an IP address in the 169.254 range, an automatic private IP address. Let's try a release and renew ipconfig slash release, ipconfig slash renew. It doesn't work. PC5 and PC6 probably have addresses in the same 169.254 range. Let's check PC5. ipconfig. Yep, as expected. And PC6. ipconfig. Again, an automatic private IP address. So what could be the problem? Because the DHCP server is not directly connected to the 192.168.2.0/24 network, there could be a problem with the DHCP relay agent, R2. Let's check there. Show IP interface, G00. Helper address is not set. There's our problem. Let's fix that. Conf T, interface G00, IP helper address 1.2.3.1. Exit. 
Let's see if we can ping the helper address. Do ping 1.2.3.1. Okay, we can reach it, so DHCP should work now. Let's try on PC4. ipconfig slash release, ipconfig slash renew. Okay, it works. Let's go to the next problem. Pat doesn't work on R1. First, let's check the problem. I'll ping from PC1 to server1, and then check the translations on R1. Ping 30.0.0.100. Okay, we reached server1. Now let's go on R1 and check the translations. Do show IP NAT translations. Nothing appears. So let's find the problem. Do show IP NAT statistics. Our inside and outside interfaces are correct, so that's not a problem. Do show run pipe include NAT. IP NAT inside source list 2 interface G01 overload. Let's check this access list 2. Do show access list. There's our problem. There is no access list 2. It's access list 1. Let's fix the NAT statement. I'll copy it and paste it here and use no to cancel it out. Now I'll rewrite it to use access list 1 instead of access list 2. IP NAT inside source list 1 interface G01 overload. Okay, now let's try again. I'll ping from PC1. Ping 30.0.0.100. And check again on R1. Do show IP NAT translations. There we go. R1 is now translating PC1's address. The next issue is that hosts in the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network aren't receiving a DNS server via DHCP. Let's check the issue. On PC1, IP config slash all. Indeed, there is no DNS server here. Now, the most likely issue is with the DHCP pool on R1, so let's check. Do show run. Indeed, there is no DNS server configured in the DHCP pool. I'll fix that. IP DHCP pool, one pool. Uh, DNS server 30.0.0.100, exit. Okay, let's go to PC1. IP config slash release, IP config slash renew. Okay, the DNS server appears. Let's try to ping via hostname to server1. Ping server1. There we go, DNS is functioning properly. The final issue is that R1 cannot be connected to via SSH. I'll try again from PC1. The username is Cisco and password CCNA, same as the previous lab. SSH hyphen L Cisco 192.168.1.1. Indeed, it doesn't work. Let's investigate on R1. Do show run pipe begin line. Look at the VTY line configurations. Can you spot the misconfiguration? Transport input telnet is set. This restricts VTY line access to telnet, so SSH doesn't work. Let's fix that. Line VTY 015. Transport input SSH. Okay, let's try one more time from PC1. SSH 
hyphen L Cisco 192.168.1.1. There we go, password of CCNA, and we're in. In this lab, we did some troubleshooting of various problems involving technologies we configured in previous labs. This was the final lab of my ICND1 series. I hope these labs have helped you practice your skills and prepare for the exam. I will now be getting to work on the ICND2 labs. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave verified publisher and accept BAT or Basic Attention Token donations in the Brave browser.